So this has been dubbed UK's most hated and most despised tax of all, and for good reason. Inheritance tax threatens to erode the very wealth that you've been spent a lifetime building. Now many consider inheritance tax as an immoral double taxation on all of us individually, but also on our families and our loved ones. Now, as more and more families find themselves trapped in the increasing grip of inheritance tax, the line between passing on a legacy and facing financial devastation grows ever more precarious. So will your loved ones inherit your hard-earned money and walk away with what's theirs, or will they just end up lining the government's coffers? The stakes have never been higher. And with a 22 billion black hole to fill in, are you walking the tightrope that could see your wealth vanish into the hands of the UK Treasury? So welcome back to the Personal Finance Crew. And if this is your first time, a very warm welcome to the Economies channel. My name is Simon and I'm a Chartered Financial Planner normally based in the UK. But today I'm recording this video for you in the infamous, overcast and drizzling island of Ibiza. So why don't you follow me back to the studio and we can get into this controversial topic together. See you in a minute. So there really is only one question to answer in this week's video. How much of your wealth will actually make it to the next generation, either from your parents to you or from your wealth passing on to your family and your children? So before we get into this video, I'm just going to pop up the usual disclaimer to say that this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. and shouldn't be misconstrued or misunderstood as offering financial advice. And make sure you watch to the end where I'm going to show you some very practical solutions about how you can avoid paying inheritance tax. Now, you know we love a quote on this channel and here is one from an ex-UK Chancellor, Roy Jenkins. And he very famously said, inheritance tax is a voluntary tax paid by those who distrust their heirs more than they dislike the HMRC. So let that sink in for a second. Now let's have a quick look at the levels of inheritance tax collected in the UK, just to understand a little bit more about the context around this topic. So in 2023, inheritance tax generated just over £7 billion in revenue for the government. And that was a record amount. From January to April this year, inheritance tax generated 2.8 billion, another record. And in July this year alone, inheritance tax generated 750 million, another record. So as you can see from this chart, the ONS projects that inheritance tax will generate seven and a half billion pounds this year. And that's gonna go on to almost 10 billion pounds by 2028. Now that's an increase of 43% since the pandemic. So about 600,000 people die each year and about half of those families need to complete an inheritance tax form in some way or another. It's worthwhile mentioning that only about 5% of estates actually pay inheritance tax at the moment. Now, if inheritance tax was increased slightly, this would raise an additional £1 billion in tax revenue every year or more. Now, inheritance tax, as you all know, has long been regarded as one of the most hated and one of the most despised taxes in the UK. Now, for families that have worked hard to build their wealth, inheritance tax represents the government's claim on a portion of that estate on death, a claim that many feel is just unfair and unjust. So after paying tax on everything from income tax, national insurance and VAT, any wealth that we do manage to get together could then be taxed again on your death. Now, inheritance tax thresholds have been frozen since 2009, and they're not expected to increase again until 2028. So that means that many more people are gonna fall within the inheritance tax net due to rising property and investments as well. So the question isn't just about whether what you're going to pay, but more how much is your family going to lose? Will your heirs be the ones that benefit from your lifetime of hard work or will a taxman take a significant slice of that? So if you're finding value in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well as our growing community. 
about 95% of the people who actually watch these videos are not subscribed. So please can you turn your device sideways so you can see the video better and then settle in for the second half. You can also hit the notification bell, of course, so you don't miss any valuable weekly content. And I promise you, it helps us to get this financial wisdom to as many people as possible. So what's actually included in your estate? Well, we've got property, and that includes buy to lets, either here or abroad, your savings and your investments, stocks and shares or bonds, perhaps a business or a business sale, and personal possessions as well, such as your car, your furniture, your jewellery, and also life insurance as well, if it's not written in trust. So how does it all work? So inheritance tax is levied at a standard rate of 40% on the value of your estate exceeding the tax-free threshold, and we call that the nil rate band. Now currently, this threshold stands at £325,000 per person, or £650,000 for a couple. This means that estates valued at less than this amount are not going to be subject to inheritance tax. In addition to the nil rate band, there is another allowance as well, and that is known as the residence nil rate band. And that was introduced in 2017, mainly due to rising property values. Now this allows you to claim an additional £175,000 each if your primary residence is passed on to a direct descendant, such as a child or a grandchild. So this brings the total inheritance tax allowance to £500,000 each or a million pounds for a couple. And this is crucial and critical in helping families protect their homes and their wealth from inheritance tax. So how do these allowances pass between couples? Well, one of the key protections against inheritance tax is that transfers between spouses or civil partners are completely free of inheritance tax. This means that when one partner dies, they can leave their entire estate to the other without triggering any inheritance tax. So for example, if David passed away and left everything to his wife Victoria, his estate would incur no inheritance tax. But when Victoria dies, she can then combine her allowances with David's giving her estate up to a million pounds in tax-free transfers to her children or even to a charity of her choice. So how is inheritance tax paid? Well, inheritance tax is typically paid by the executor or the beneficiaries of the estate. Now, they must complete such forms as an IHT 400, which I've put on screen, and this provides a detailed breakdown of the estate's assets and liabilities along with any exemptions. But beware, this is 16 pages long. Now these forms need to be filed within six months of death with penalties and interest charged at 7.5% for any late payments. So what that is, is a tax on the tax. Now what is absolutely insane, well to me at least, is that you need to pay your inheritance tax bill before you get access to it. So if you do have an inheritance tax bill, you're gonna to need to make sure you can get access to some funds from somewhere to make the payment for inheritance tax before the late payment charges begin to kick in. So what are the exemptions? Well, crazily, many of these exemptions were set in 1986 and have not been changed since, despite the increase in the cost of living. So in fact, there was a request by the ex-Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, in 2018 to revisit these, and despite a report being made, surprise, surprise, it was completely and utterly ignored. But here's a list of the exemptions for you. We have an annual gift of £3,000. We got wedding gifts of £5,000. Now I've just got back from a wedding in Greece, and if you know, you know, and that wouldn't have even covered the DJs, the singers, and the saxophone player. We've also got unlimited gifts of £250, unlimited gifts to charity, and we've also got something called normal expenditure from income. Now, this is a quirk of the system, which means you can give as much as you'd like from your income, which is your salary, your pension, interest on savings, or even your dividends, but not from your capital, 
so long as this doesn't affect your normal standard of living. What that means is you could consider making contributions into a junior writer of up to £9,000 a year or even contributing into a children's ISA for their future. This would not only help reduce any inheritance tax bill, but you'd also be getting tax relief on the contribution. And that's a win-win. So in reality, you can give as much as you want so long as you live seven years. So it is a seven-year rule. This is well known and perhaps a little bit misunderstood. But in essence, if you give away up to £325,000, you're okay. You're good to go with no problem. If you give away more than £325,000 and you die within seven years, there's going to be an inheritance tax charge on a sliding scale, which I've put on screen directly from the government website. And here's the address if you want to check it out yourself. So what can you do to avoid this dreaded and this hated inheritance tax? Well, first of all, you need to make sure that your will and any power of attorney is completely up to date. You can consider giving away more of your money during your lifetime so your family can enjoy their inheritance whilst you're alive. You can put your assets in trust to protect your wealth. And if you need a video on that, I'd be more than happy to put one together. You can also consider a joint life second death insurance policy placed in trust for your beneficiaries. Now this type of life insurance pays out after the death of both partners, ensuring that there's enough money for any inheritance tax bill. You also need to make sure that you keep very accurate records in case the check with HMRC. So in conclusion, inheritance tax is one of the UK's most despised taxes, but with the right planning, you can significantly reduce or even eliminate its impact on your estate by removing financial pressure on your family. So the key is not waiting until the last minute or even failing to plan at all, because that could leave your family burdened with a tax bill that they are not prepared for. Now I've also included another two videos here in the series, which also cover inheritance tax and what might be also in the crosshairs in the budget in October. So thank you for watching until the end and for your time and for your patience as always. And I'll see you all again next week.